Hello YouTube, this is Cruise Man on the 2018 Goldwing heading toward Dallas, Texas on my way home from Wingding. This is the final leg of my trip. It's about 6.13 in the morning and I've just got started about 6 o'clock. So it's still dark. And uh, just wanted to thank all of you for your comments on my Wing Ding motor vlogs. It's been fun. It's been a lot of work. Because usually what I do is uh, when I get to a hotel, I have my laptop with me. So I, I'll spend uh, two or three hours going through all the video and editing and trying to put together something worth watching. But appreciate all the comments and all the thumbs up likes that you give me and all of those who subscribed you know we've had over 130 new subscribers to the YouTube channel since I left for Wingding a week ago that's pretty good I actually prefer riding in the dark because it's cooler I don't have the sun to contend with, but the downside is I always have concerns about critters. You know, deer, this is the time of day when deer will run out in front of you, or critters, uh, little critters that are out feeding at night, and I don't know why, I guess they're drawn to the headlights of cars or motorcycles, but so I'm always... Go, I'm always extra cautious. In fact, I go slower. The speed limit is 70 right now. I'm only going 60. Just because, just in case, I want to have enough time to try to attempt to stop or maneuver out of the way. And you know when you're pulling a trailer, you just don't have the same stopping distance or the same maneuverability. So once the sun comes up and I have more visibility, uh, I feel a little more comfortable increasing my speed. A few years back, I restored that Honda Trail 70, and you know it turned out pretty good. And I was, I really enjoyed the process. So I decided I needed a bigger project. I've always been fascinated with motorcycles from the 70s, especially the Japanese bikes. And I originally what I was trying to get was to find a like a 1970 to 72 Suzuki uh, TS 125 or 185 or 250 but those bikes when they're available they were outrageously expensive and uh, usually they came from the northwest or the northeast and you had to pay several hundred dollars six seven hundred dollars shipping um, but i love those two-stroke bikes i still would like to restore one one day but man they're expensive because that's what i had as a kid i had a uh, 125 suzuki a 71 and uh, it was a great bike just loved it but what i found locally was a 1975 Honda CL360. I found it on eBay and uh, it was in pretty rough shape but I won the bid and uh, Ricky and I went over to pick it up. It was about maybe 25 miles from where we live so I asked the guy when I bought it if it would run, and he said, yeah, it runs. So we were just going to go over there, and she was going to drop me off, and I'd wait till this truck gets by. So we were going to go over there, and she would drop me off, and I'd ride the bike home, follow her home in the car. Well, the bike was in really, really rough shape. And the chain was so rusted, I'm amazed I made it home. The bike just 
looked as though it had been sitting outside for three years. The gauges were pretty bad shape. The chain was shot. It was rusted. I stopped and put gas in because I didn't trust the gas that was in there. And I got it home, did make it home, believe it or not. It didn't run very good. It was missing and just sounded terrible. The bike only had about 10,000 miles on it, if, if I were to believe the odometer. So I started the process of tearing the bike down. And like I did with the Trail 70, I tore it down to every last nut and bolt. Everything was documented, put in Ziploc bags, every bolt, every screw, every washer. I wrote it down in a book. I kept a, a you know, a accounting of every part that came off. And the rust was amazing. There was, now nothing had rusted through. For example, the exhaust pipes were very badly pitted and very hard to find replacements. They only made this particular model, the 360, they only made it for two or three years. I think 74 and 75 might have been the only years. Now they made the CL350 uh, for quite a few years before that, but the, the CL360, this is the scrambler with the high pipes. They only made it a couple of years before they just dropped it all together. And I wish I had done some more research before I had bought the bike because since they only made it a couple of years, there were very few parts available on eBay or anywhere. There are just almost no parts available for it. So one of the toughest tasks was to, how was I going to restore these exhaust pipes? Because one of the mufflers, I can't remember, I think it was the top muffler, is actually pressed on. It's not something you can just unscrew and remove. It was very strange the way Honda did it, but it was a, it was a ring that was pressed in place, like with a machine press. So the only way to get it off was to cut it off and then try to figure out how am I going to get it back on. But I did get both the mufflers off. I actually restored both the mufflers myself. I went through at least three wire brush wheels on my bench grinder, just grinding off and you know, buffing off the rust of all these parts. But I got the rust off. They were a little pitted, but they weren't, they weren't, you know, rusted all the way through. So they were still usable. The mufflers were still usable. And I, you know, painted them with the heat treated paint, primed them, painted them, the whole thing. So they looked good. The chrome guard, it had to be re-chromed. And then I had to figure out what to do with the exhaust pipes. Well, there was a place in Arlington that said, well, first of all, the chrome shop said they couldn't re-chrome them unless they had been completely dipped and cleaned with chemicals. Well, there was only one place I could find about 50 miles away, so I had to drive the pipes over there, and they did this hot dip process where I think it cost me about 80 bucks to have them cleaned. And that was before I took them to the chrome shop. So, I got that done. I tore the engine down. I took the top top end off the engine because I wanted to repaint all of the engine parts, all the little covers. And I contacted the guy who had rebuilt my Trail 70 engine. And I asked him if he would go through and redo the valves on this CL360. Well, he doesn't work on twin engines, but he agreed to do it anyway. He has the ability and the machinery to do it. He just normally doesn't do it. So I shipped the engine off to him. I think he's in 
Virginia or Carolina, I'm not sure. And about three weeks later, I get back my my engine. And man, did he do a beautiful job. He had cleaned up the cylinders. I just basically sent him the cylinder heads and the, the valve covers and everything and the cylinders. And he cleaned everything. He uh, honed out the cylinders and just cleaned up everything. It, just, it would just look beautiful. It looked like a brand new engine when he sent it back. Well, by then I had repainted all of the engine covers with high temperature aluminum paint to match Honda's color as closely as I could get. I also learned how to string up spokes on a wheel because I had to take all the spokes off the wheels. The wheels were in terrible shape. I had to take the rims and have them re-chromed. They were re-chromed. I had to take them back twice because the chromers screwed up the chrome on the rims and I had to take them back and have them redone. But I bought all new spokes and polished every spoke, every single spoke. And if you want to have some fun, try polishing up spokes on a polishing wheel. Because that polishing buffer wheel grabs those spokes and man, they go flying. I've several of them stuck through my wall. So anyway, got the brand new spokes on all new nipples and learned how to string up a wheel with spokes. That was kind of fun. Did it in my living room. So all the parts that needed to be painted, I got painted. All the brake drums and everything. I took the frame to a local uh, powder coat place and had the frame and the center stand, kick stand, had all those parts powder coated. So, you know, I'm into this for quite a bit of money. The bike cost me about $1,000. I spent about another $800 on chrome. I spent $100 getting the, the pipes cleaned out. Well, then about the time I get ready to put everything back together, you know, I'm looking on eBay every day for NOS parts. Well, damned if I didn't find a brand new set of OEM NOS exhaust perfect chrome but they were expensive i think i paid three or four hundred dollars for it i also found a brand new in the box nos gas tank and the gas tank that i had was going to need some body work done to it it had some dents in it a lot of deep scratches a lot of a lot of uh, rust so I figured, I bought that tank, I think, I know I paid $400 for the gas tank. And it was beautiful. It, it was brand new. It had been sitting on a shelf for, God knows, 30 years. But it was the wrong color. It was the green. They made two colors, orange and green. And this, the tank was green, but it didn't matter because I was going to have everything repainted anyway. But I mean to tell you, the tank was beautiful. Beautiful condition. And then I found, by some miracle, a brand new NOS seat in the box. Perfect. A brand, I mean, brand new. I think I paid a couple hundred dollars for that. So you can see the money starting to add up. So then I take the tank and the side covers, which are the only painted parts on the bike as far as the orange color. One of the uh, side covers on the bike I bought was cracked and it was damaged to the point it couldn't be repaired. So I did find an NOS side cover in orange and it had perfect paint. I mean, it was, it was good enough that I was going to be able to get the painter to match to that color. And I found a local painter. I say local, he was about 50 miles from me, but in Dallas, anything within 100 miles is local. And his name's Greg Sabatini, and he works out of uh, like an office warehouse complex. 
So I take the tank and the side covers to Greg and I give him this side cover that's the orange I want to match and I mean to tell you he did the most incredible paint job and the tank was two-tone and most people that redo these tanks they do them black and orange but they're but from the factory it was actually a dark brown and he found that out he researched it and found the color the proper color and I mean to tell you when that bike came out it or the, that tank and side covers I picked them up they were spectacular you, I just it was just beyond belief and it was buffed out it was much better than what Honda would have delivered from the factory because this thing was cut and buffed just beautiful so then I started the process of putting everything back together I learned a little trick this engines pretty heavy when I took the engine out I didn't know any better I had the bike on a stand and I basically by myself lifted that engine out of that frame and set it off to the side and the engine weighs quite a bit but I learned a little secret that I wish I had known is that you lay the bike over on its side you lay the frame and the engine over on its side then you take it out and then you just lift the frame off so when I put it back together that's how I did it I put the frame on its side put the engine down on its side put you know bolt it all up then turned it upright much easier but everything went back together probably took me eight months to do the entire project from start to finish most of that time waiting on chrome plating painting waiting on parts to come in from eBay but then I needed to get the engine tuned up because I know nothing about tuning you know a twin engine with timing and carburetors two carburetors well there was nobody in the Dallas Fort Worth area at a Honda dealer that would touch that engine they don't know anything about it everything's electronic now so nobody out none of these mechanics nowadays know anything about carburetors and timing and all that so I ended up having to buy a climber manual online and learning how to tune up the bike myself so I was able to set the timing top dead center learn how to do all that adjust the clutch uh, synchronize the carbs had to buy a carb synchronizing kit got the carbs synchronized got everything tuned up and I fired it up and I mean to tell you it ran like a dream and the first time I took it for a ride I bought also bought all new gauges that was two or three hundred dollars for new gauges there's no way to restore gauges on a Honda I've tried everything and what happens is the red pigment on those gauges for the RPM like red line it fades badly over time for some reason the Suzuki whatever pigment they use on Suzuki's seems to hold up but all the Honda gauges you'll find in the 1970s that red is faded almost looks yellow but I found a brand new set of NOS gauges so I put those on but the first time I took that bike for a ride, I'm not kidding you, it almost, it was emotional. That's all I can say. I almost came to tears because it brought back memories of what it used to feel like to ride a motorcycle. No windshield, no cruise control, no electronic aids, just you and a machine and two wheels and an engine and it was absolutely amazing 
it was really fun.